Also live with us tonight, we have Abdullah Fadil, the UNICEF representative in Pakistan. He joins us from the capital, Islamabad. Abdullah, it's good to have you. Tell us what has struck you and your teams about the scale of what you're seeing there. Actually, it's um, people speak about the 2010-2011 uh, floods, uh, but by any measure, this is far worse. Um, it's just the scale and how uh, this was quite sudden and, and speedy. Uh, it did not um, save any part of the country at the, at the moment. All four provinces are impacted. Of course, Baluchistan is the hardest hit. Uh, Sindh is devastated. Um, Southern Punjab is also impacted. And now, the last few days, uh, we've just witnessed through your report what is happening in KP. Um, so it's quite actually enormous. Uh, and for the lack of better words, um, this is... Uh, a calamity of biblical proportions as, as the old attach goes. And one thing that you see in news coverage all the time are these pictures over and over again of people having to move. They're in boats, they're leaving their homes. And one of the frustrating things about that is you don't hear the end of the story. So you tell us, are they able to get to places for the most part where they can be safe? Do they have places to go? And are there other shelters for these, these people? Unfortunately, there are not enough shelters, tents. Uh, the country actually needs um, all the support uh, it can get. Uh, there's need for shelters, there's need for water, there's need for food, there's need for uh, medicine. Um, when the water subsides, and we hope it will subside, of course, we are fearing uh, cholera and all of the waterborne diseases that will come naturally uh, after uh, floods uh, subside. Uh, so mm. we need to scale up quite quickly. Uh, the world needs to react to this um, urgently. Pakistan is suffering as a result of climate change. Um, and I think uh, those of us who have contributed to climate change and benefited from its impact um, need to actually now look at Pakistan and, and really be uh, a supporting hand to Pakistan at the time of need. The government is mobilizing, the people are mobilizing, and I'm also appealing to Pakistanis in the diaspora um, to really uh, do whatever they can uh, to mobilize their resources, but also their governments uh, in the countries they are in uh, to support Pakistan in this time of need. What would you say are the greatest needs right now? And for people out there watching who do want to help, what's the best way for them to do that, to, I, I guess, send money, as is the case in many of these disasters? Absolutely. People should immediately, the best thing is to, to reach out to their own immediate families that they've been supporting and send money directly. Uh, UNICEF has presence uh, in in many countries, but also the rest of the UN and NGO communities is all um, uh, ready and willing to help. Uh, the government of Pakistan also launched its own appeal mechanisms. Um, so resources, tents, medicine, uh, chlorine tablets, um, all of these are needed um, as well as much, much, much more. Uh, the United Nations is actually sending an appeal Tuesday with the government of Pakistan to the tune of $160 million. Um, we're hoping to respond to wash, nutrition, food, um, including, by the way, uh, vaccination for animals, um, because livelihoods have been lost in this, in this calamity. Yeah, it's easy to forget that one type of disaster, flooding, then leads to all of these terrible after effects. Thanks for reminding that, uh, us of that. Abdullah Fadil, it's good to have you, and we appreciate the work you do. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us.